So we all know why we're here. We're here to celebrate two of the most beautiful people that any of us in this room have ever met. I'm sure that we can all agree that in this room today, it's not his and her peoples or them and your people or yours and my people, it's our people. What a pleasure it is to have all of you here celebrating with them. From the wise words of Terry Pratchett, if you don't turn your life into a story, you just become a part of someone else's story. The stories of these two began way before they met each other, but the focus today is not on their individual storylines, it's on the one they started together. I'm honoured to be here tonight to sing George's praises. I met this excellent fellow in our first year of high school, and for those who didn't know him back then, he hasn't really changed much. He's taller and a little wiser, but his hair is just as glorious. One of my favourite things about this curious boy, George, is that he likes to try new things, and he'll invite you along for the ride. He convinced me to join him on a ton of various adventures, like science camp, with the promise, maybe, that I could learn how to blow stuff up. This adventure turned out to have profound effects on both our lives, and here is where these two met. This is our town. It's a crazy cosmic journey. Something magical does happen when a bunch of nerds hang out under the stars by a school gym on about three hours sleep. I'm guessing this is where Brooke picked up her science teaching bug. It's no surprise that these two picked up each other as well. But space did not stop these two. Five years of flights back and forth from Warrnambool to Brisbane every month or so ensured that their relationship would thrive. Brooke came right at the start of lockdown. You know, she's obviously a Brisbane girl. Our weather is shit, let's face it. Warrnambool people, it's, you know, not great. And that poor kid, she came down. We ended up locked down forever. Um, it was cold. She had no friends, no family support just us and I'm, you know, I, I've said to many people I wouldn't be surprised she packed up and left. I mean, it was a tough gig, Brooke, um, but she embraced us all and we've embraced her and we are so thrilled that she's um, agreed to be George's wife and join our crazy family. <laughs> Brooke and I first met 13 years ago, uh, first year of university at Griffiths and first lecture day one, we're both there together at the side. It wasn't until exam blocks that we got to know each other because I was wearing a Les Zeppelin shirt and Brooke said, I like your t-shirt. And I said, I like yours too. And it was like a stripey blue white shirt, just nothing. And that was what sparked our friendship. I didn't know George for quite a while after you guys met. I didn't even know that he existed. He just might have been a fable of your imagination. So it took about two years for me to actually meet George, get to know him, but I'm so glad I have, I did, because George, you're amazing. I love you. Brooke, I love you as well. You're amazing. I'm not going to cry. He absolutely is crying. Excellent music choice. I know, right? We, we, you, you guys, I don't think we've even told you, but the music is tops. Yeah. <laughs> Got like five different nerd tracks to play through this ceremony. Georgie. We have been together for eight years, but it feels like a whole lifetime has been. You're the yin to my yang, and you bring out the best in me. I love the life we've built together, and I look forward to the many future years. I love that you can calm me down when I get too involved with trying to make things perfect and OCD. Your sweet and caring nature is something I really treasure and it's why I know you're going to make a great father. This is the part where I have to put my feelings into words for everyone to hear, which I can barely do when we're alone.
We've been living together for a few years and surprisingly managed to make it through the pandemic. Two major home renos and a four year engagement with relatively few arguments. And I don't often enough tell you how much I love you because it doesn't feel like a teenager's hormonal love anymore. The love I feel is like a slow, constant burn. We spend just about every day together and when you're not around, I miss you. You're not the type of person to buy me flowers, but will always be the person to make me a cup of tea when I need it. You're my companion cube, and unlike the game, I promise to never hurt you. We always make the joke that I am your destiny, not the video game, but in honest truth, you are my destiny. When I first met George and we first were going on our first date to the concert, I remember sitting at the dinner table and I was like, so dad, I'm going, I'm going on a date. And dad goes, a date? You just got rid of the last guy. And I said, yeah, yeah. He goes, what makes this one so special? I said, oh, well, he got me a box of chocolates. Dad goes, you're just gonna go out with every guy who gets you a box of chocolates. Well, they were good chocolates.